Thank you, sir. So, what I was asked to uh, put together, if you recall during our goal setting session, um, there was a, a discussion about a bond uh, or a, a project about acquiring a property down in the marina. So, I was asked to put that together, and I want to start off by thanking uh, our town planner, Jason, for uh, helping me put this together um, envision some of this. So, what this was is sort of a big picture thing. Uh, as you recall, the board had some discussion. One of the members was, was offered this out and said, what would a vision be to acquire the property down at the Hampton Marina, and how would that benefit our community? So I put together this to give us kind of a view of some of that. Why acquire the property? Uh, for recreational purpose. You can uh, uh, secure access for our citizens now and in the future to the ocean by way of the river. Uh, provide recreational access and the potential for some public uh, future and private development possibilities down along that area. Um, here is an aerial shot of that uh, location uh, along the marsh. You can see the, the property. The next is just a quick drawing that, that uh, Jason helped mark up of what's the potential that we could do with that property if we acquired it for these purposes. Drawing in, you'll see the colored areas, some park, uh, open space, green space, the ability for folks to access down there to kayak, bird watch, to you know, just get out and visit a, an area. The town of Hampton owns only a, a small area of really publicly accessible uh, ocean front. This is a separate area. would be back by the marsh and give the opportunity to take advantage of some of those uh, water uh, uh, views and the water access uh, for recreational purposes. Some examples of other places that have done this. Uh, I get the chance to visit the National Harbor property in Maryland, obviously a much larger property, but gives some ideas. Here's an aerial shot of that where you can see some of the piers down further. There's a marina as well. There's water taxis that take folks along the river into D.C. or up to Mount Vernon where they need to go. Um, obviously, that's a major project. Here they have a, a park down along the front uh, for citizens to visit. It was, it was quite an experience to be down and looked at it. This is an example of a, um, a children's park down there with sort of artificial sand and sculpture and artwork. There's a huge TV screen down there that they run. Nationals baseball games as folks are wandering around down there in the day, uh, you know, in an astroturfy kind of a park there for folks to sit. It's a very beautiful area. Uh, all along that river area, there's a walking path area for folks to go along and enjoy the views and get exercise. Um, here's a couple other shots of that, what those parks look like. Here's some others across the country. San Diego on the left, San Diego State Park. Um, again, meanders down along the water, riverfront area. Uh, Portland, Oregon with a little less developed, but an area for folks to walk along the river down there. And again, Seattle, Washington. So quick in summary, uh, how would we do this? Obviously, it's a government uh, acquisition uh, through the eminent domain process, purchase the property, and the plan for future development. Uh, currently, the Warren article projects a, a cost based on uh, the current uh, assessed value. The law would guide how that eminent domain process would uh, take place in order to acquire a property in such a manner. And that's really the end of, of the quick slideshow I had for you on that. I'd be happy to answer any questions that the board may have. Questions? Um, did you want to start with this, though? Uh, I'm happy to offer some comment, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I think this is uh, obviously an idea whose time has come for discussion in this town. And if you um, go as, as close to, uh, to uh, the South Shore in Massachusetts, the town of Hingham is buying uh, the Hingham Harbor. Uh, they're also looking at uh, buying an aquarium. And they're, uh, they're concerned about access for their citizens, their denizens. Uh, in the town of Hampton, of course, I wasn't here in 33, maybe some of you guys were. Um, <laughs> but uh, the state took the beach, and that, that must have been an interesting, uh, an interesting heist, uh, and they still have it, and we don't have access to that. And they rule the roost, and they tell us what to do, and uh, we support that operation down there to uh, the tune of about a million and a half bucks a year. We've uh, spent 17 million bucks to support that infrastructure development they did. And so um, we're on our own. We go to the North Beach, and there's absolutely uh, very minimal parking. Tourists are down there. It requires manpower to uh, um, keep tourists out of there so residents can, can uh, recreate in that one little spot. And there's virtually nothing else left. The west side um, of Ashworth Avenue, 
is a dynamic and dramatic natural uh, resource area that's equally as valuable as the uh, eastern side that the state owns. And the recreational opportunities that come along with this and where this can go with some perhaps rezoning, so it's all business seasonal down there, where you can uh, know the fact that your children, if they're not going to be able to afford it, you can't afford oceanfront living, um, there's this beautiful park, and Jamie did a great job in spooling this up in an, in an initial salient, that uh, they can learn how to sail, that uh, the town would have real estate rights there, that uh, future generations of Hampton kids can do what many of us have done, gone down here and jump up to Smith and Gilmore Pier and uh, <laughs> swim in that harbor and, and uh, exploit opportunities, parasail, scuba dive, uh, swim, and, and really enjoy yourselves. There is talk down on that, that beautiful south end of the beach where people struggle um, in the off season. And they talk about attracting business down there. And they're, they've got you know, their livelihoods, they've got their, their, uh, their banknotes supporting their, their commercial interest. There's a gentleman that just came back from California and I was talking to someone at uh, a coffee shop and he said, we've got to have piers. And what better place to put it in a protected area and the piers are already there. The marina's there. The boat slips are there. So um, where it goes from here forward, I don't know. But I think uh, much, of, much of town government is always about compliance, rightfully so, with the DES and compliant with this, and we have to do this, and Concord and, and the federal government tell us what to do. And we can strike out on our own. And um, going forward on this, whether it takes a year, two years, three years, we simply acquire a magnificent asset forever in perpetuity uh, that we never have to relinquish for, for uh, the, the denizens of Hampton. And it will increase our uh, tax values. It will increase that, that uh, battle rhythm down there on the west side uh, of Ashworth Avenue, which is, is a, such a sleeper. And we're so blessed to have that. And we look, at, uh, we look at the revenue that's been created from the beach in that real estate trust fund. It's gold down there. And now, whether you support using that money as I do or you don't, uh, it speaks to how valuable that real estate is and the, the benefits that come along from ownership and operation of that. And I think we ought to, we ought to look at it strongly. Thank you, Jane. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. So would there be ways to bring money in to the town by having this, like with the marina or whatever? Yeah, I, I believe there are. There's certainly some revenue opportunities there. I mean, I, I, you know, clearly you have to explore this through the legal process of how you acquire that in the eminent domain. The primary focus would be on that recreational purpose for, you know, the town's use. Uh, but there certainly are some commercial opportunities down there as well. And Mr. Waddell? I think it's a good discussion to start. Uh, and I think, I think it needs a lot of planning, you know, to go into it. And I think it needs a lot of... Uh, uh, input from both public and private and I think you know ideas of how it could be revenue producing also are good but I, I think it's a great idea to start the discussion start the planning start thinking about it mr. Bridal. I think it's something we should let the voters decide I think it's uh, the potential is there to have a uh, a nice area for the people of this town uh, that will pay for probably a good possibility it's going to pay maybe not the whole thing but a mo majority of it will be paid for by what's what funds can be generated off it and it gives the people of this town an opportunity to to get the place i grew up on that river i jumped off smith and gilmore's piers and <laughs> <laughs> i went to many clam bakes that were held at the marina itself um, that they used to have a long time ago they used to have a, a park area down the end, and they used to have townspeople used to use that area down there. Uh, and I'd like to see that again. Mrs. Wolseley. Where does eminent domain come in? Is that property now freed up so that that's a possibility? Where, where, I, that well, eminent domain is always a possibility in a government taking. That's one of the problems with, with the discussion we're having. It is currently a private property owned that would have to be a taking for a legitimate purpose under the eminent domain. And I'll defer to Fred for, you know, specific questions on it. But that's essentially, that's a big, that's a big deal. That's a yeah. big deal we're talking yeah. about. Then again, this is a visioning thing of what could it be coming forward for the recreational purpose. And I think that's our focus of where we need to be on it. I have one more quick 
quite because I, I would, that just caught my eye because I sure, thought absolutely. that was kind of an interesting yeah. concept. Uh, the location, and I can't tell you how many feet above sea level, but I have seen the projected drawings from some of the UNH professors and some of the studies who show that whole end of the beach by 2050 or so underwater. And I don't know, the Hampton Marina has already been to the planning board and zoning board a couple of years ago to raise their parking lot and put in more gravel and stuff because they were going underwater. So the location scares me a little bit right down at that end of the beach. Do you have, do we have any idea how high that is above sea level or? I don't as I sit here tonight, no. Because I, because the, the water rising is what would mm -hmm. concern me. Mm -hmm. So, Mr. Walsh, is is this going to be uh, like a advisory, or? I think that depends upon how the board feels. Uh -huh. uh, <clears throat> we're suggesting that you need to look at eminent domain if you're going to purchase, for two reasons. Uh, one, there is an established process, a very detailed yeah. legal process to go through <clears throat> in order to acquire title. <clears throat> The second reason, and probably the most important, is it wipes out all prior claims that could come against the property in the future from past owners or mm -hmm. past people or right. any obligations or debts from anybody. It clears the title completely so you, the town doesn't have an opportunity, if they decide to do this, doesn't have to uh, watch their back all the time. Mm -hmm. the, the title will be completely cleared, everything wiped off. Mm -hmm. So that's the reason we talk about eminent domain in a situation like this. And it's just that green area that you show us on. on no, that's uh, the area that you see in that in that visual. I'm sorry, I shut that off. But if you see uh, uh, what's in front of you, there's two uh, shots. One's an aerial of the properties it sits today. Yeah, that's kind of blurry. But yeah, it's I was a looking tough, at but this. I, I apologize. The second one with the green. That's yeah. just. It's essentially the same photograph we looked at. That's. It's just uh, some of that green etching in is one variant of uh, what our plan to put together in a short basis of. What could we do down there? What could it look like? But the extent of the property is, if you see the blue highlighted yeah. um, at the, the bottom of that, that's really the end of Fellows, I think it's Fellows Ave down there, okay. um, as it turns down on a Harris. Um, and then the rest of that property runs out towards that water. If you follow the green line and the blue lines, that's essentially along the property line there. Okay. And, and it's that area out to the blue, back to the green, and yeah. out to the water from there. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah, this one is about the clearest one. That yeah, yeah, yeah. So, what are we, are we what are we going to need to take a vote here for? Uh, as to whether or not you wish to proceed to um, put an article in the warrant to do something about this potential. Okay. I see you have a couple of options just from, from putting it forward. The, the number that's been generated so far, you could put a warrant article now and, and decide you want to move it as a bond article onto the warrant now. Well, we can, you know, put it off to future discussions. It begins the vision, right. and it begins the discussion, and we can approach it in that manner. That's really the choice the board has today. I'm, I'm personally in favor of starting a vision in a, in a discussion and not putting a warrant article out yet. That's my, my feeling. For a warrant article that has any value to it, you're saying? I, I'm just... Mm -hmm. A value amount. But are you in favor of... I'm not sure I understand it. Do we are we looking to have a advisory warrant article? You don't even need to put a warrant article on. That's really the your right. choice you're making. Do you want to pursue it now as a warrant article with this number? In which case you would vote to move it forward with the number that's been proposed currently. So how much is the number? Four point two. Yeah, I think Fred, you have the number. Four point two million. Yeah. Yeah. That's what the assessed valuation yeah. is. Now if that was bonded out, how long would that bond be? Twenty years. I mean, it could be shorter, but the right. 20 years is the normal standard. Right. You could go, I believe you can go as far as 30, but that would be unusual. So let's ask it this way. Who's in favor of this $4.2 million bond? Mr. Wardell. No, not at this point. Mr. Bridal. I could be, yes. Okay, S Mrs. Walsley. No. I'd, I'd, like to, I'd like to come back uh, to this issue uh, next week. Okay. And, uh, think about it. And, 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 and think about it for a week. Jason, Fred, and uh, Town Esquire, and Jamie. And uh, Jamie's quarterback, and that's a great job. Um, and uh, um, 
talk to uh, John Nyan, HBAC, talk to some of the folks in the chamber, mm -hmm. um, get the stakeholders down there, get everyone involved, and we don't want to be premature and uh, mm -hmm. right. um, ask Go for on. the 4.2. There's yeah. a lot, lot right. going on, but uh, work this, and then perhaps next year, I think, mm -hmm. would be a good time to, um, with the, the uh, eyes, dotted the t's crossed jim's got some good points that yep. we come forward yep. with something really strong i i would say we even put that out a little further than next week i mean if the board decides and, and i agree i think it's premature on the number That's frankly fine. personally That's right fine. now good point but good i point. think having meetings and discussions to see what's the community feel in this okay. is yep. this is the initial pop to you the first thing is do you think it's worth pursuing or no that's really the first thing I'd say for the board to decide. Yeah. And if it's pursuing, I would suggest we take a timely move forward because there's obviously many other things that need to be worked through here. Um, this was a big picture, big vision for a swipe at it. I would suggest we move yeah. that forward. There's no need to rush it. What does the community feel? We'll have some forums, bring those folks, the stakeholders in. But if that's the board's wish, it's, if it's not, then we stop here and we will move on to the next piece of business. That's really, I think, the best way for the board to move forward. Fine with me. There's no sense in putting something like this up unless you can make a detailed explanation to the public. I, I don't believe we're ready for that. This is a vision thing to right. say. I think it's a big picture. Remember, it was on your goals to have the discussion. This is the first one. And the first blush, it seems to me there seems to be a, a consensus that you're interested in exploring the idea further. Yeah. And I would suggest we, you got a busy budget period. Let's push it off. Let's schedule it out. Mm -hmm. Agree with those stakeholders to schedule some meetings for HPAC and other folks okay. and move it into the next year. Can could we incorporate into this looking looking process some information perhaps from UNH and so forth on their projections Absolutely. on yeah. the uh, ocean rise? Yeah. All very good questions. Yeah. Okay, thank you. We appreciate thank you, Jamie. it. You That's here thank you, Jamie. Appreciate it. Any other